don't compare yourself with anybody. Yeah. Applaud anybody. Anybody who steps in front of an easel or steps in front of white paper to write or, or so whatever you do, just bravo. I just came down this really super rocky trail down to the beach. I'm in Stinson Beach, California, at the south end. There's huge boulders. It's an amazing crystal clear day. And I'm here with Doug Andler, the amazing figurative and landscape painter. I've known Doug ever since art school. And I've just watched year after year after year as his work just gets better and better and better. I thought it would be so cool to go painting with him, to sit and watch what he makes and how he works and how he thinks. So I did that as Doug's beginning to paint this really cool rock I'm sitting right in front of. I think you're gonna find it really helpful and inspiring and just a whole world. Welcome to Art to Light, a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. So just to let you guys know, I'm out, out at the beach, out at Simpson Beach, California, setting up landscape painting uh, with Doug today and you know I'm usually in my studio so this is really great to just be here and I'm going to be painting and he's painting he's starting to set up painting we found a really cool beautiful place to paint and uh, you can check all these photos of where we're painting if you go to the art to life website under podcast so Doug thanks so much for uh, letting me just like hang out and paint with you today thank you Nick I love your podcast and I can't even believe I'm in a podcast yeah. well <laughs> This is my first shot at, I'm watching you lay in this painting, uh, this 12, you know, looks like 10 inch by 12 inch. 11, 14. 11 by 14, sorry. And it's just really cool to see the whole thing. So tell us like, how are you approaching this? Like, you, what did you just do? The last 10, 15 minutes you've been like thinking, walking around the beach. How are you setting this up? Well, I know this area pretty well and I come back to it because it resonates really deeply for me. So we're at the far, at the far, uh, far south end of the beach where you can't, and the tide's coming in, so you can't really get around. I know where this beach is, uh, but to answer your question, I am I usually walk around this area until something strikes me, and being out here in, in this environment, it's like it hits you hard like a hammer. I really wait. I wait for those moments when something really strikes me, and we're, we came over looking for shelter. I looked over, and it was like, that's the painting. And I also, I look for paintings that paint themselves a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, it's just something that had occurred to me as we were walking out here. You know, you were talking about just getting super present and dropping in. Yeah. And like, I love that you get, you get all this outside space and these rocks and the water and the sky and the wind, all this stuff that, like, I don't get that in my studio. I kind of walk in, I look what I did yesterday and have at it, but... There's all this other considerations, which I sort of am envious of. I mean, this is, I love wild spaces. Well, I love that you're envious. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm envious of what you get to do too. You have that big, beautiful space. You got these huge paintings going and you know, I'm trying to paint huge on a micro scale. You know, a lot of these turn into bigger paintings in my studio, but really I'm out here trying to create a diamond. Yeah, and that's a cool idea that like, you can make a small painting look huge yeah if you do it properly yeah yeah and doing it properly i don't know how to do that i'm just out here just sort of throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping that i can address each one of these four edges of uh -huh. the frame because that's really what encapsulates your viewpoint is the those four edges you know uh what was it Cezanne or someone now i'm gonna get deep ish but i think it was Cezanne who said as soon as you make one mark the painting's done because everything addresses those four sides and that one mark. You're painting, your composition's done. You're, you're heading off. You're heading yeah, off. Yeah, right, exactly. There is moments of invention, you know, like right now I'm sort of creeping up on it. I like to keep things thin. So your setup is, 
is like a Julian box, right? Yeah, half um, box. Half box, which is pretty cool. And uh, again, I'll take photos of all this stuff. And this is, you're using oil paint and yes. a little turpentine and that's about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I use, I try to use the best quality stuff I can. Oh yeah, your board's pretty yep. next level. That's You can is, buy panels, but I like, I'm a craftsman. I love wood. I love, uh, did I say that loud enough? I love wood. No, but I love, I love wood and I like to make all of my own stuff. You know, I would love to make my own Julian, except they're Hard. cheaper <laughs> <laughs> to buy it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I make my own panels. This is, um, marine ply cause I'm on the ocean and a lot of times it's wet wind and wet fog and they warp. I cut them in a certain direction so they don't to decrease the warp. I, uh, I lay up my favorite linen, which is Clausen 13. It's pretty racy, meaning you can move across it quickly. Oh, really? What um, was that called? Was Clausen's 13. It's oh. double primed uh, linen. Oh, boy. Oil primed, Belgian. And you'll see, you know, I mean, I was taught early on in College of Marin, they would give you garbage to work on because then eventually when you get the Cadillac, you appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So right now, you know, you come out here and now, are you laying in darks? Is that what you're doing? Or are you just kind of like, kind of sketching in the basic composition with, with the I'm dark feeling color. the basic composition and supporting my concept with middle value. Middle value? You're starting with middle value. Yeah, I start middle and work the other way around and then I go whatever direction I want. People say work dark to light. Oh, yeah, in watercolor, light to dark, right? Yeah. You got to, because once you put it down, it's done. But in oil paint, that's what I love about oil paint. Am I yelling? No, you're good. You're good. I feel like yelling. But no, that's how can... I feel on the ocean. You just feel like yelling. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so great. It's so magnificent. I know. So I'm painting middle. Um, they say paint dark to light, but that's, I don't believe that. I mean, you look at, you look at all of the great painters, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll cite Soroya because everyone loves Soroya. I do, of course. Or Mancini. I love Mancini. It, those guys are going back and forth. You look at the painting up close and you can see they're going like to dark, dark, to light, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're you know? not stuck. There's, they're not following a formula. Right. But I think, you know, dark value or contrast, which even though you're using middle value right now, you can easily see those dark shapes yeah. because the contrast is white. Even though that's middle, yeah. it looks plenty dark. So that's sort of what's going on. You can see you're putting in darks, kind of, I think. Relative to the white panel. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that brings up the most important point, which is, you know, what is warm and cool? Warm and cool is what's relative to what's next to it. So I, I love that. I love that you brought that up. It's important because in this early stages, what am I doing? I guess I am. I'm just laying in the composition, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just sort of sorting out my thoughts. I did do a sketch, you know, but I know that this, this, a lot of painters, they like to paint, okay, here's my mark, and that's done. It's called painting the finish. And there's some people who can do that. I like process. Yeah, no, totally. You know? Well, what I love about your work is that, and, you know, we talked about this when we were driving over, that it's a painting first, and, and then it's this place. And, yeah. and you're, you know, this place is already here. We don't need to do it again. Yeah. But, and that is all about abstraction that's all about the feeling that's all about yeah. all that and that's the mystery part yeah. the, the wonder that you're bringing to it i mean are you thinking like that right now or are you just yeah. just trying to get a foothold i'm i'm looking at i'm looking at the wonder yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I am it's wonderful yeah there's there you are tom stanley i mean look yeah no that's okay oh she's waving you know i'm painting yeah. putting figures in the environment that's my next level you know a lot of times i look at my paintings and they're about the place. They're about the quietness of the place. And then all of a sudden, someone will walk by in a bikini and you go, well, wait a second, this is a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I see fishermen and they're in their zone. I, I, I love it. I love that whole. So um, am I paint, what am I painting? I'm painting the wonder of the place. Absolutely. Yeah. And you were saying something to me, you know, when we were starting, like, wow, it's really cool to have someone here. I sort of realized you're always by yourself doing this, which is amazing and awesome but you know that's and i guess you know i am in, i am too in my studio but it yeah a lot of time to reflect let's just say yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's a good thing it's a good thing i mean i think everyone needs to get to know themselves boy i love how that that loose 
thin paint goes on that it's drain linen. down God, there. God, it's just beautiful. Yeah, never done that before. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, you're like imp improvising. Well, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm doing two things at once. I'm So I'm really interested in that slot right there. Yeah. Because that's what that is to me is that's a directional thing. That's going to point you down to here, down to this, down to here, and back out here. Oh, yeah, right. It's like a, you're taking us on a journey in, in the picture. Kind yeah, of, in the picture with plane. With a pattern of dark and light. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's just basically what you're painting is this big rock and the water. Yeah, and yeah. that's another good question right there. What am I painting? You know, <laughs> yeah. what am I painting here? What is this about? I think it's really about, I'm intrigued with all this stuff. And like we were talking about that's on the way. All that stuff, that's like where the, the water's coming in onto it's, the beach. It's the pattern of white water. Uh -huh. And here's a nice little suggestion. In case anybody wants to go that way on the composition, I'm going to lead them back over this way. Or I'm going to stop them from going there. Or I'm going to bring them up that frame. I like that idea better. So it goes up the frame, then the horizon brings you back. It's so interesting. Like, you're painting, but you're... You're painting for a viewer too, you know, like yeah. it's very, uh, you know, it's Can like, I swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking with the viewer. Ah, okay. That's what I'm doing. I'm really trying to get the viewer to be interested in the entire painting and move them around, you know? Yeah. I'm not interested in the country road that leads the, to the lemon tree. You know what I mean? Uh. <laughs> I've known you since we were in art school. You were doing illustration and, you know, just yeah. take us back a little. You were doing illustration for a while. And then how long ago was it you just started painting landscape and figures, like, full on? Like, well, when, when did that, what happened there? I've always been a figurative painter, even as an illustrator. But I, I went to College of Marin. I didn't know what I wanted to do out of school. So kudos to anybody who's, like, struggling, trying to figure it out. I didn't know what to do. And at the last minute, I applied to College of Marin. I went in there and uh, I took art as an elective. And uh, I had this guy, let me back up. I've had art in my family my whole life. I'm like fourth generation landscape painter. You're kidding. Yeah. Your dad? Not just landscape, but artist. My dad? dad's a fabulous artist, art director. His father was a, a pretty good painter, and but also did commercial art, like signage and stores and stuff like that. And then my great grandfather, is a noted uh, landscape painter from Utah. So I have this in my blood, but I didn't know any of those people. My dad was not around. I had this fabulous stepdad, but you know, my dad was just, I, I didn't know anything about my past until uh, later in life. Mic and then, drop. And then, and then <laughs> no, then you, but was it, you know, kind of a big step to just like, oh. okay, I'm just gonna paint. I'm well, just gonna go out here and just, paint nature. Oh, you mean back, back to your question. Sorry. Yeah. I was an illustrator. I wanted to make a living as an artist. And so, uh, I, I went to San Jose state, got a graphic design degree there, but I, I loved painting. I loved, uh, the figure. Um, first time I ever painted the figure was at college of Marin. I walked in the figure class. And I was just like, I'm done. I mean, there's beautiful model up there, but I, I got it. I really understood, you know, I was like, what are we going for here? And I took this fabulous class with this young 19, I don't know how old he was, Jack Scott, I was 19. And it took off from there. And then when I got to San Jose State and then later to Art Center, I was all over the figure, you know, always, always painting from life. And I started to see that it's not just some thing about painting naked ladies, it's about painting life. And so I kept going with it. And I've always been a figure painter. And, and in illustration, I always had the figure involved in my work. And then one day in 2000, I was like, the art directors were getting younger and younger and didn't have any sort of referential point of what, of art. And I remember having a conversation with someone about Star Trek over the, you know, as an illustrator, you don't meet your, your right, clients, right, you know, it's right. all facts and FedEx. And I remember having this conversation about what well, was about Matisse and the dance. And I was referencing Matisse's pa famous painting, the dance. And they were like, who's Matisse? And I was like, Okay, that was a red flag right there for me because I wanted to work with people who were understood my concepts. Yeah, and, right. And then another conversation was about Star Trek, and I said, you know, Star Trek was next generation. I mean, next level, you know. And she goes, Oh yeah, next generation was amazing. <laughs> and I was like, No, no, no. I'm talking about Spock. <laughs> yeah, with those and, ears, you know. <laughs> and so at that point, I was like, I don't know. I think. I think I'm just <laughs> going to do something else here, but I've always done landscape painting with my uncle and, and I just loved it, but I never made a profession. And then one day I got this opportunity to show in this gallery 
And they said, uh, so I decided to create a painting a day. There it yeah. is. I'm going to take a picture while you're talking here because it's so cool. Just to like, you like how, how cool it is? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's getting there. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. I'm going to, I want to, so I want people to be able to listen to this and then they can go in and, and see wh- where this thing started. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I just asked that because for me, that was, you know, that was a big step that I was scared to take. And I'm always impressed when people just, go for it and some yeah. usually it's something like that that catalyzes it like yeah. wow i can actually i can just do what i fucking want and yeah and pull this off maybe or i'll certainly try well you know? <laughs> it's a hustle it's a hustle and to be perfectly honest you know i've had bumps in my life i had a bump in my life you know from a relative that helped me i'm um, just to be perfectly honest about it yeah. you know i mean don't don't go throw, <laughs> throw the baby out with the bathwater you know, you have a family, whatever, don't just quit it all and, you know, go become a painter. It's, it's a rough road. It's not a, it's a rough road. You know, I do a lot of things to get myself where I am. Yeah. So, and so this, the way you kind of work is you, you're painting your studios out here, but you also, and you do these small paintings and then some of them are better or cooler and then you you develop them larger and you take this as a study and, and work larger yeah yeah so i love doing this i bring these back to the studio i have a big crit rail very uh art center you know and where i stop and i look at my work and i sit with my work for a long time and i got what's really a wonderful thing is that is that my winter rail the quote-unquote winter rail is bigger than my the rail where i'm kind of like ah. Eh, I got a lot of paintings, a lot of piles of paintings that are like, eh. Oh, you know? I see. Oh, winner. My, yeah, but my winner rail are the ones that become bigger paintings. And then I develop color charts for each one of those paintings and develop that into a much bigger Wait, you piece. develop color charts for them? Yeah. Like pull out the colors and put it on a piece of paper? I look at the painting. Like right now I have a limited palette. Yeah. This is very... And I notice you're working really thin in the beginning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be painting in a, you know 20 minutes and I, I'm going to remember that. You want to start thin. I like thin. Yeah. I like thin to thick, but you know, I'm just laying it in because we're bullshitting. Yeah. And I'm just sort of, you know, I'm actually focusing more on you and my thoughts than uh-huh. I am on this. But if I was, if I was to, to really start, I get my knife out and I build my piles. Okay. But I will. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be like a big. I, I sometimes find, you might find like having a conversation while you're trying to paint will make a really amazing painting. Yeah. I've noticed that. I've yeah. had some of the best paintings I've made were when a friend came over and sat in a chair and I was trying to talk to them while I painted, you know. That's cool. Yeah. I, I like that idea. I, I think it's because I'm not, you're not totally present. Right. So you're sort of. Well, you're half in, half out, and you're not trying hard. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I can't come with you every time, but. You know. <laughs> oh, I see. So now you're using a palette and I just kind of like. I like, I like knives. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So it really, God, the depth thing, you know, thick paint, comes forward and it's just boy doing that it's powerful well well okay that's interesting thick paint comes forward in a physical in a physical way but in in a a painting you can also create thick paint but have the composition diagonals push you back in space and it creates another depth Uh you know see i just get into that stuff because that's darker in fact i'm just going to go for that because i love i love when the paint gets rich I remember painting on the figure, on the figure, and out of frustration, I just, you know, when in doubt, lay it on, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, I laid it on, and it was like, wow, I'm, I'm actually sculpting this. And that was another level. Yeah, and so, yeah. Th- then in come the knife. <laughs> yeah. Because like, you get paint on you, it. And it's, I get that sometimes, even with abstract paintings, like I'm reaching into the space yeah. back there and I'm doing something back there. Then I'm putting this in front. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can think, oh, I need to add something back there. Yeah. And that back there means it's going to have low contrast or whatever. But you, when you start thinking that it's not a flat space and it's dimensional. Yeah. Like what we're sitting in front of, like this rock and yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 And bring en- enter the wind and the sand, and all of a sudden that dimension is coming yeah. at you, and you're really aware that this is. I'm not standing in front of a picture of a, a movie. I'm in the movie. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Ah, it's so there's such a vitality. About I am the movie. 
you're, you're going to edit all this shit out. No, no, man. <laughs> we, we, want, we want people to we want people to know the real Doug. <laughs> people, yeah, I let it all hang out. But it's just God. It's so it's so beautiful here, you guys. I mean, it is probably one of the most clearest days. There are these islands that I can see from here. They're called the Farallon Islands, and they're usually just sometimes you see them, and sometimes there's this little ghost silhouette. You can see, we were, like, you can see details. It's so clear. And yeah. there's something about the clarity today that it makes the, the horizon line really contrasty, which you're doing in your painting. Like, the water is this deep blue, and then the sky is just this bleached out kind of winter uh, sky. Totally. Low light. Low light, yeah, yeah. And your palette is not a piece of glass. It's not a piece of plastic. What is it? It's wood. It's old school. Well, this is a solid piece of, well, no, this is not, this is plywood. Uh, it's a type of ply, but it's, a, again, a mahogany ply. I like organic stuff. I mean, I'm really into that. Yeah. Uh, I, I like natural. You know, I know oil paint isn't totally natural, but I just, I like to keep it as natural as possible. Yeah. Wow, it's really shaping up. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can start to see it, right? Yeah, totally. God, you're so fast. <laughs> 40 years, my friend. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, do you sell these paintings like the small ones or do you hold on to them until you need, you know, like how does this work with like people? I love, I love my paintings, uh -huh. you know. I mean, I'm in love with the painting. Why? You know, I ask myself, why am I in love with these paintings? It's, it's my visual diary, you know, it's my life. And I really like my paintings to go to my friends and my family. But people who buy my paintings sometimes end up being friends. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Have you noticed that if someone really loves your work, that you kind of, I mean, obviously you're going to like them, but like there's really a connection. Yeah. That you attract a kind of simpatico with the people that like your work like they get you too yeah, and yeah. and i've had the same experience i like to think of myself as a painter's painter i'm a lot of the people in my paintings are people who are either painters or they have this artist inside them that they get it they identify with what i'm doing you know and another reason why i paint in like thicker like this is because i think we all want to be four-year-olds again where we got to paint remember that fresh yeah, moment where absolutely. it was just like i had this little picture of me i'm probably two or three and i'm standing in front of an easel and i'm just you can see the look on my face i'm totally into it you know and i'm holding a brush <laughs> really and it's like i i just remember that and i'm i think it's sad that there's so much formal art being i mean i, I get it people want to learn line value color all that stuff i get it but there's there's, there's, well, you're doing it, bringing the art spirit back. All right, right. You know? Yeah, so the, so there's a big playfulness thing happening yeah, here, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Let your freak flag fly. <laughs> no, I, I totally, that's, that's it. The playfulness. Be playful. You know? I, I have animals come out and hang out with me. I mean, who gets that? You mean you're just painting and then like a rabbit comes and sits next to you? Well, Rabbits are usually around. They kind of watch from a distance. But cranes, blue herons, raccoons. I've had all sorts of weird <laughs> water type of animal beaver types come up. <laughs> everything. Everything. Coyotes. They, yeah, because you're being still. Me. And yeah, and you're kind of not like, you don't exude a hunter kind of mentality. You're just like a lover of nature standing quietly. I don't have the hunter vibe. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick, for, for uh, inviting me to do this. It's so fun. Yeah, it's totally, it's really, really great to just, uh, what's gnarly, you guys, is I'm going to try and do a landscape painting in about 20 minutes, and it's going to be, uh, I'm going to really try and stay away from the comparison uh, tendency. Oh, yeah, don't. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Yeah. Applaud anybody. Anybody who steps in front of an easel or steps in front of white paper to write or, or so whatever you do, just bravo. So what's hard in this, in, in all of this? What do you struggle against? What know? do I struggle with? Yeah, yeah. Value. 
Let's shut up. Really? Yeah. Still? Still. I'm stepping back. Uh-huh. Value is, is my, you know, I, I love the color because that's my strength because I, I get off on color. I mean, I do these super anal color charts for paintings and I'm, I'm in, I love color, especially clean color. Um, but value is always, you know, it's always, it always gets me. Yeah. It's really, I, and this is sort of one of the things I teach, you know, it's like, if there's a problem, it's probably value. Yeah. You know, I had, I posted something, uh, I hope you saw it. I posted something the other day about, uh, the Wayne Thibault show. And, um, oh, let me say something before, because I'm at, a, I'm at a certain point right now yeah, yeah. where I'm negating certain things. Okay. And I'm going to take a picture at this point. Okay, yeah. yeah. What I, I'm always, you know, once you, it's like <laughs> I've dissected cadavers, which is rad, really rad. And the teacher said to me, said to us, our group, he said, go slow because you, you don't want to, once it's done, it's done. And sometimes when I go over, I guess I'm speaking to you because you do a lot of negation in your work. Wait, with the cadaver part, what are you no, talking about? No, 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 about? we'll go back oh, to that. Okay, okay. That was a weird example. Now everyone's tripping that I cut on cadavers. But um, what I'm trying to say is I don't want to lose some of the quality that were my first marks. Right, because they're just these beautiful first marks. Yeah. yeah. And so you have to be sort of thoughtful, not to be afraid to move to the next mark, but appreciate what you've got. You know, like I love this stuff and sometimes I'll just leave it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And a lot of painters, they sit there with their sable brushes and just the fucking, uh, 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 and it's gone and there's no mark making. I guess that's what I'm talking about, mark making. I don't want to lose some of those beautiful marks is really what I'm getting at. So do you leave, like, I try and do this and I don't usually end up, but there's a couple paintings where I've even left some raw canvas. Oh yeah. And that's... I I'm sort of try and do that, but I'm such an overworker. I tend to just like everything gets covered up, but, and that's what you're talking about, right? Like yeah. there's a contrast of there's some, this came in early and that's nice to have that in the painting. That's money right there. Yeah. That's beautiful. You know, I mean, I could sharpen that edge, but only if I want to, to move <laughs> the eye somewhere else, Right. Go. I'm not chained to the subject. And here we go. Skip Whitcomb. If you ever listen to this, the subject of the painting is the painting. Is that what he taught you? He was a mentor of yours, right? He's an incredible mentor of mine. I love him dearly. Um, look for him. What's his Take name his, again? Skip Whitcomb. And he's, I'll put he's all these center. in the show notes. He's Art Center. There's a there's countless people that I've studied with that I or that I paint with or that I I just admire. You well, know? we shared uh, Dan McCaw, who I learned color from, right? Yeah. Yeah. I turned at, I learned attitude from Dan McCaw. The guy had that big glass palette huge piles of paint and he would just have this raggedy brush and he's just dragging me. Yeah. I was like, well, wait about, what about your core shadow? He just looks at me. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, yeah. His attitude was so great. Oh, so was, good. And I loved how a lot of, you know, how he'd tell, it was all metaphor. You know, you're like, in a painting, you know, you're walking down a dirt road and, you know, and uh, you don't need to go down all the dirt roads and just stay on the railroad track. And, you know, it was kind of like, you know, yeah. horse sense in a way. And horse it just, sense. <laughs> it just yeah. made it, made it doable. Totally. Totally. Wow. So you're bringing pink in. That's so cool. I, I'm just pink. saying it because, yeah, you know, so happy much. accident. Well, there's a lot of beautiful. There's some color there's in there. There's amazing color in these rocks. But you got to wow. maintain your composite, your structure. You know, I'm going to come back and restate all this shit. But why not throw some pink in there? You know, I mean, yeah. I've got this limited palette. That's another thing I really like to do. This is a, a blue. Uh, that's, uh, that's ultramarine or no, cobalt? that's cobalt, lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow. And then this is vermil vermilion, which is a red-orange. And but I, it's a cool red-orange, right? Sort of? Is it warmer? Depends cool? what it's next yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but compared to cad red light. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, warmer. That's nice. Cooler. Yeah, that, yeah. It looks really, in the sun here, it looks really uh, uh, orange. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Oh, so the, you're, you, that's what you're starting with, the... Red, I, yellow, and blue. Those, I, the cobalt, I limited it. lemon yellow, and, and the... Skipper taught me this thing. I've never seen him do it again, but I really took took off with it. I love the color wheel. Oh, yeah. Like, I a, love this thing. You have thing. a pocket color wheel. Let me take a picture. Oh, That's yeah. That's crazy. You bring that out here. Hell, yeah. Wow. Okay. I use it. Really? Not to compare color. Right. That's stupid, because it's printed. But what I do is, 
I'm using basically this. I do a three, four, five triangle. So I look out there and I see what color is most dominant out there that is a primary. Okay. Blue, green. Blue, green, right, right, okay. right. So it's actually blue, blue, green, blue. So I go to blue and I count one, two, three, four, or I could go one, two, three and go to yellow. So my concept, my idea is to really draw in the color so that I have as few tubes as possible because I get off on seeing all the different colors you, only a couple colors make. I could have a full palette here. You, you can see I've yeah, painted, yeah. Uh, there's an old palette, but you know, sometimes I'm all over the map. So you're just so, making all the variations just out of those yeah, three. And I'm harmonizing. So I take it from blue, I go one, two, three, four. So now it leaves me a three. One, two, three, red, orange. Ah. I could go, I could start at blue, green, and then I choose the blue. That's a blue, it's a cobalt, it's pretty safe, right? So you're basically saying there's equidistance on the color wheel between the three colors you choose, and it doesn't matter what colors you choose, they're just equidistance, and that'll make a, they're different enough, I guess is what you're, that creates so the differences. everything you said is correct, except one thing. They're not equal distance. It's not an equilateral triangle. It's a three, four, five triangle. Oh boy. It's not a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's a one, it's a, it's a three, four, five. Why? Because I don't want it to be Oh, oh, equal. you don't want yeah, it. Oh, okay, I don't so you do a three, four, five. Yeah, okay. I, it's more interesting. Oh, yeah, I interesting. Could, I could yes. also do a split complement, really steep. Ah. Sometimes I'll use my green as my yellow. Oh, trippy. Because there's yellow and green. Right, warm... So I'll paint just a secondary palette. Wow. It's next level shit. Yeah, that, huh, but that's kind of neat. me saying it's next level doesn't mean I get it because <laughs> yeah. color is elusive because everything is relative to what's out there. Right, right. It's really, it's so fun. I mean, anybody can come out and slop something down on, on the canvas and make it work and, and do a great job. I see it all day long. But for me personally, my own personal goals are to like push myself a little deeper because I don't want to phone it in. I don't, I don't, I'm not happy with that. You, you fit, you, like today, I mean, or any day, when you're done, do you like, do you, do you feel like you hit it or did you get close or how does it, obviously you, you keep coming back. I mean, what's your batting here? Well, I told you my, as I get older, my winter wall is bigger. There's more on my winter wall. Well, that's cool. The yeah. winter wall. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I am proud of that. But, uh. Yeah, I forgot that rock. Why did yeah, I do that? That's beautiful, that deep purpley. Dark. Yeah, now that now that that pink makes more sense. Yes. You know? I'm totally fucking around because you're watching, but I'm I'm enjoying this tremendously. Well, go for it. Don't yeah. don't feel that 3,000 people are watching. <laughs> and there no one actually is watching. We're just listening carefully. I wish they were. I'm a bit of a showman. <laughs> So I'm going to go, you know, sometimes I've been thinking about bringing black to my back to my palette because black is the queen of color and you can get some beautiful grays. I use black all the time. I yeah, love it. I know. It's beautiful. Are you one of those people that's like, you got to make your own black? I make all my own colors. How do you mean? Oh, I see. Yeah, you're mixing it. Right, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I see, I see, well... Fetchin did this. Nikolai Fetchin. Everyone should look at Fetchin, not just for his incredible draftsmanship. But if you see a Fetchin up close, that guy, man, he had whatever brush, whatever stick he found and threw it on there. And he would stick. You look in the eyes. He's always got like pure color in the eye. Yeah. Or yeah. there's always pure yeah, color. Yeah. Carl Rungus. Skip taught us this too. My friends and I went up to the, uh, in, in uh, Wyoming, where is that? Yellowstone, and there's a Rungus Museum. And we analyzed his paintings. Big, monumental goats on the hill. And I mean, just an epic animal painter. Like, fresh, you know? I mean, fresh. Big strokes that just said the whole deal. Yeah. And you look around and you look for his pure color. And you go, ah, okay, pure color, pure color. And suddenly... You've got his palette nailed. And you see how he made all his grays, those colors. Oh, interesting. You know oh, what I right. Mean? Because the, the, it, it's the, the tip off is it's, that's it's what where that's they left. pure color. Is yeah. It? yeah, that was on his palette. And there's a little hint of it. And that's yeah. what he was using that day. What it is, is it's a gift. It's a gift to all of us. Because what it's so amazing, all these guys left us a gift to find. It's a treasure hunt. And if you want to spend the time to find it, it's right there. Look at a Monet, same fucking deal, especially since 
they put up every Monet he ever did for money. Right. right. I mean, he'd be roll over in his grave. He's like, that's not done. No, my absolutely. damn palette's in the corner of that painting. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But they left us this beautiful gift to explore. Mm. How do you do it? You know, and now it's our job. Here's where I feel sort of small out here, just painting little landscape paintings on little panels. But, you know, it's our job to bring something to the whole game so right. that our, our contribution. Our co- what are we contributing? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just painting little pieces of color with the right edges attached. I mean, making a small painting feel monumental is is no easy thing. And then you do larger paintings. How big are your biggest paintings? Um, Four by four. And you're not. To you, that's like a postage stamp. Yeah, that's like a little. (laughs) No, but so you've got this four by four panel and is it a panel or is it a canvas? Uh, I've been painting on canvas, but I love big panels. Okay. They're just, you know, like you, you know, this aspect of the shipping, you know, yeah, it's yeah. expensive. It's hard and, to ship them. Yeah. But do you stick the small little study next to it? Do you take a photograph today when you're out here? Do you ever do that? Take I photo- take photographs, a photograph to uh, archive my work. But when I'm painting the painting, I have my color chart that I made and I've that to the painting. I have my color chart and I have the original painting. And then it becomes like your work. It becomes a journey of exploring. And, and pretty soon that little study is not there anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not there. Do you think somebody can come out here? You know, I'm thinking about. I don't know, you know, people who are maybe listening who are. God, they just, they're just breaking into this and landscape. And can you figure it out coming out here? You know, can you just come out and start painting from life to learn this? Or did you, do you need to like really learn to draw and all the, you know, like, can this be your classroom? Such a good question. Yes. But you'll hit the wall. You'll hit the wall, especially if you start, you know, seeing painters that you just go, holy shit. You know, because there are a lot of formal aspects of being out here that are helpful. Drawing is helpful. Value is helpful. Color is helpful. The, the notion of those concepts is, is very yeah, helpful. Yeah. Some people come out here and they're just like, oh, I just want to move paint. What's your goal? If that's it, okay, cool. It's an expensive goal. And that awesome easel that you bought is going to be at a flea market and then I'm going to snatch it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's lots of, lots of art art schools that have lockers, you know, leftover shit. Right. But anyway, I think, I think that a couple lessons just to get you started is good. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you saw some of the, some of the stuff that I just broke out for you, even though you're, you're a seasoned painter, but it's like, there's just some little things to be out here that just streamline. Yeah. Like I was saying, when we first walked out, I try to knock down variables. I try to knock down as many variables as I can so that I can get to the painting. Yeah. You know, like I said, Am I nourished? Do I have enough coffee? Did I go to the bathroom? Did I bring white? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do yeah, I have food all my for that raccoon that's going to come? Yeah, exactly. Snacks for the critters. Exactly. Am I prepared to let it flow? You know. See, I, I love that, and that just could be just done. And I haven't even gotten into that stuff, right? So I think it's time to, to you know create a sky. I'm not used to my beautiful little palette. You know, I, I usually stay away from cobalt blue because it's kind of, it's a beautiful blue, but it's kind of easy because it's so, it's so neutralized. I paint a lot with phthalo blue because it's nuclear and the it's latitude, yeah, yeah, the latitude of it, you know, this, the, the, the way I can stretch it, I get a lot more bang for my buck, you know, same with phthalo turquoise and, you know, any of the quinacrinone color, you know, quinacrinone magenta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll paint a painting with that. I love it. Wow. You know, and then I just, I just play with compliments. It's all compliments. So, so how long will you work on this painting? Like we've been at this for half an hour or whatever. Well, how, how long will you? If I'm yakking with you, I could paint on this all day. <laughs> it's just so fun. But the light changes, right? Yeah. So that's why I'm laying my shadows early. And my concept is basically not going to change. That's all it's going to be in light. Yeah. yeah. I lay my shadows in early and, and I know where my shadows are. And, you know, again, the painting is a painting. It's about the painting and it's really about invention. I'm just inventing as I go. But 
but I do know some things, right? Like you were talking about the formal, formal stuff. I do know that when you look straight up at the, straight up in the air, in the sky, it's going to be much cooler. I'm looking into space through a bunch of atmosphere. And as my eyes move down towards the horizon, it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. There's my cobalt blue, which is warmer. And then it moves down into a green and then a yellow on the horizon because yeah, I'm yeah, looking yeah. directly through the particulates. Right. There's more, there's more warmth. Yeah. All that totally. stuff in the air. Totally. So, you know, as we kind of wrap this up, like, I'm just curious, what's like one big thing that, you know, it's one of the most helpful things that you recently hit on or that, that you're just like, oh yeah, I, that is just like solid for me. Can you share one or two of those ideas real quick? Materials, have your brushes clean. Think about dark and light and relativity. What's next to what? Squint your eyes, squint and step back. That's been the mantra my whole life. And it kind of works for life too, right? Like oh, stop, yeah. get yeah. back. Yeah. Just look at this objectively. Get yeah. out of reactivity. Just stand there and look. Wow. L. Ron Hubbard. There I love go. that shit. <laughs> no, you're totally right. Right. And, and I'm out here processing all my shit. I'm going through, you know, I'm a happy go lucky guy, but I'm going through stuff. My life's not been easy. And, I, and I'm bringing it all the painting. I actually, on Tuesdays, I do a portrait, usually a portrait or a, paint, a figure painting. And my therapist said, I have a therapist. I, I applaud anyone who takes that on and I think it's a great thing but anyway I bring my paintings to my therapist and she like looks at him and I'm like I really like this one she's like oh they look so angry and I'm just like oh, <laughs> shut up <laughs> and but she's right I'm bringing all of it to the dance that's awesome yeah that's awesome. here's the here's the other thing Cezanne I quoted Cezanne twice Cezanne said I show up every day just in case oh, and I love that magic because Dude. what he's saying is, you don't know when it's going to strike. And it could be when you're driving your car off to do to the bank. I'd rather be in front of the canvas when it strikes. Uh, I show up every day just in case. Dude, thank you so much for uh, sharing this. I'm going to, for those of you guys listening, I'm going to take some of these pictures as this painting keeps getting better and better. <laughs> and I'm going to go try and do a painting right now as well. Thanks, uh, Doug, thank, thanks so much. This is just really, really wow. fun. I could sit here all day. In fact, it's, I probably will. It's my, it's my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Today, Wednesday, the 16th of February, we're smack dab in the middle of the Art to Life free workshop. In this workshop, I'm teaching three of the most powerful Art to Life principles, design, value, and color. These three principles can help you get unstuck and radically improve your work. So come check it out. Go to a2lworkshop.com and join us. It started on Monday the 14th of February, but the workshop goes all the way till Friday the 18th. And don't worry, there's if you miss some of those lessons, you can always catch them. We have the recordings available till Wednesday the 23rd. So again, join us, a2lworkshop.com. Come along. It's going to be amazing. Okay, see you there. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review and whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning, I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolivepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.